I'm Brian Fuller, Editor-in-Chief at ARM, and we're here at Embedded World 2023 in Nuremberg, Germany. I'm with my colleague from ARM, Robert Dave. Robert, welcome. Thank you, Brian. Tell us a little bit about yourself before we get to the topic at hand. So I am in the automotive group of ARM, where we're really looking at um, solutions for you know automotive going forward, um, and what does that mean from an ARM perspective? And so we'll talk a little bit about some of these initiatives uh, in a little bit, but specifically really looking at trends in the market and what or the automotive market and what we need to do in order to meet those requirements. So we're in Germany, which is an epicenter of automotive design. It sure is. It's all around us here. Um, let's talk a little bit about software-defined vehicles. How, how do you define that? Um, so, so we're going into this sort of age of um, of automotive, where a lot of the functions in the vehicle are really being defined by software. So it's no longer just a box that does something. There's going to be software components. Um, and what it means for the automotive world is you have to develop that software kind of a little bit more agile than tradition in the automotive world. Um, and, and, and this has implications for the people developing that software, the OEMs building the cars, but also for the consumers of those vehicles. It sounds an awful lot like the evolution of mobile phone design, right? And and I'm I'm thinking that a lot of end consumers are getting this experience on their tablets, on their mobile phones, and they want to sort of port that into their car experience. Talk right. a little bit about that. Yeah. So what's interesting um, is you're, you're, you're spot on. That you know we're we're very used as consumers to having um, devices that are updated all the time, which is not the normal vehicle experience. No. If you want to update your vehicle, you go to the dealer and they maybe will put a little fix in. The reality is that the software-defined vehicle is going to enable us as consumers of those vehicles to have a better experience as the car gets older. Which is which is what we expect with our cell phones. You know, yeah. I get a new operating system update. I've got some new features. There's absolutely no reason why we can't have that with the vehicles. It also allows the OEMs to have a closer rela relationship with the consumers of their vehicles. Yeah. So they can basically give them new features, new functions to that vehicle, and actually build that relationship, which could also include monetization of that relationship. A new a new business model or new mm -hmm. business models that we couldn't conceive of five or ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, service models, but but what this really means is that that software has to be easily deployed to the vehicle so that you can do those updates. It needs to be developed and then deployed in a sort of seamless way. Key to that, of course, is standards, which is our, our next topic. Let's talk a little bit about SOFI. First of all, what is SOFI? And second of all, uh, describe what it does and how it's transforming automotive design as we know. So SOFI stands for Scalable Open Architecture for the Embedded Edge. And it's really a, a it, it's, it's an architecture that is looking at how you can do software development and software deployment for this software-defined vehicle. Okay. Software, 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 software. Yeah. So um, the interesting thing with Sophie is that we looked uh, as a community. So Sophie's a, it's, it's basically a consortium of companies from the automotive world, OEMs, tier ones, from the software world, CSPs and OSVs, and, and basically this community that's coming together to really look at how the software-defined vehicle can be built. Okay. Um, what we looked at was, well, there are, what other industries kind of do that sort of development and deployment? And we found that a lot of what happens in the cloud, we can actually bring over to the vehicle. So in the, in the world of cloud native development, there's all of these tools and methodologies that people use to develop in the cloud, but then they actually deploy to the cloud. 
what we're what the difference with Sophie is that we're deploying to a vehicle which is not the cloud. Right. So we're really having to look within Sophia. Well, what's the difference between a vehicle and a cloud instance? There's quite a lot. You have to worry about real time. You have to worry about functional safety. You have to worry about different compute elements in that vehicle. And that's really the purpose of Sophie is to try to get our heads around that. And that's why it's a coming together of an industry to, to do that. Um, and, and, you know, Sophie is now about 18 months old, and we've actually made some huge strides with, you know, defining what the architecture looks like, but also now starting to do the implementation around that architecture. And newer members are, are coming in almost every day. Talk a little bit more about that momentum in the last 18 months. Yeah, so we, we, we founded Sophie with, uh, with a governing body which includes OEMs, Tier 1s, uh, ourselves, and uh, some software uh, vendors. What we then had to do was to start putting together what does the architecture look like and what does the SOFI infrastructure look like in order to actually you know, get to that architecture and get to deployable solutions. So that's where we started bringing on other people in the embedded uh, automotive world. So as silicon partners, for example, because they're going to provide the platforms that are going to run in the vehicle. Okay, we needed to have more software operating system vendors, and we've got you know auto sub providers. So all of these um, things that are used in automotive development are all coming into the Sophie world. And I think we're now at over 70 members of Sophie. So we've got some real momentum. And you're right, we're, we're kind of announcing new members certainly you know a couple of weeks because we are getting a lot of really interesting interest across the whole automotive industry. And on the eve of this embedded world, last night, there was a Sophie reception that you were sort of the ringleader of. <laughs> and that was, um, it was packed. Yeah, it was It was a good, yeah, ourselves, um, along with Suze and Electrobit, that are two members of, the, of, of Sophie, we kind of put this together and we wanted to really get um, a really kind of nice social event where members of Sophie and also potential members of Sophie could meet, socialize, ask questions about what Sophie is all about, and kind of really get some good discussion going around what Sophie can do for the automotive industry. So yeah, it was great, great reception. It was very lively. <laughs> yes. Anyway, thanks for your time. I'm going to let you get back to business. Thank you, Brian. Great to see you.